Welcome back guys to our minimalist run of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. We are now at the first crystal dungeon, the Palace of Darkness. Whenever you enter here, uh, head over here to the right. Be sure to use pots on the little creatures that have the red head or the green heads. Using a pot will kill it from the front easily, just one hit. Instead of wasting bombs on these walls, just run into them. Uh, right now we're headed to get a key. It's probably the item that we have to go the most out of our way for in this dungeon. Two arrows to kill the red guys, one for the little bluish green dudes. And yeah, as you can see, uh, you can control those guys that I just killed back there, so uh, use that to your advantage. Be careful as you make your way past the spike traps on the conveyors in that area. You have to use bombs on these kind of walls to blow them open. After we get the key, we'll just use the mirror to go back to the beginning of the dungeon. There we go. Alright, time to get another key, which is over here to the left. This key is a lot easier to get, though. Not that the other one was hard to get, but you know what I mean. It doesn't take anywhere near as long. It's right here in just this one room. There's a switch underneath this pot, or skull, I guess, in this world. Same difference, though. Alright, next thing to get is the big key, which you'll need bombs for. After getting into this room here, head to the left. There will be an area on the floor that you can bomb right here. There we go. We're going to use the mirror right after we get the big key. Or at, actually right after we get the small key after we get the big key. You'll see. Yeah, don't jump down there to the bottom just yet. You gotta come up here because the big key's in this chest. Alright, now hop down to the right. There will be a switch underneath the pot for you to hit. Right here. And get the big key and warp back to the entrance. Alright, that's enough warping back to the entrance now for this dungeon. Our next thing to get is the dungeon treasure, which is the magic hammer. Which I think the magic hammer has more strength than the master sword does. It's stronger than it, but I don't think it has anywhere near as much range. Plus, you can't shoot beams from it. But if I want to do more damage, I can stick to the magic hammer. You probably won't see me doing that, though. In this room, uh, use a pot to kill the first Helmosaur, and then quickly grab the other one and take it with you to kill the second one on this area. Easy enough. There's going to be a dark area throughout here. Be careful because there's those weird uh, dinosaur looking creatures that breathe fire, so be careful. There's some bombs in that chest up there in the upper left, and then there's a key and a chest in the lower left of this room. So, first thing we're going to do is uh, blow open a hole in the wall over here. Place a bomb. Let's go ahead and get the key while we wait on that. I lied about warping back to the entrance earlier. We, have, we are going to do that again, just one more time. You got the magic hammer. You can drive the wooden stakes down into the ground. You can use it to pound on other things, too. Alright, time to warp back. Okay, that should be the very last time that I have to warp using the magic mirror. Not that it really matters, though. Alright, just heading back to where we were, pretty much. This room right here. You'll want to have bombs ready, because it can help uh, get rid of the enemies down below. Kill that one real quick. Place a bomb, toss it over there, then laugh at him. Ha ha ha! Alright, hit that switch with either an arrow or a beam from your sword as you've seen. Then head to the upper right part of this room, remove the pots, and then push a statue onto the switch, otherwise the switch won't stay down. There we go. Got some more of the little mimicking enemies in this room, the enemies that follow your movements. There we go. Avoid that spike trap, hit that switch, and then shoot an arrow into this statue. Wait for the long, long wall to open up for us. Did they have to make that so long? 
mean, it's not a big deal, but geez, they could have made that less long. Put the stairs closer to us. Get the hammer ready, because you'll have to pound some weird mole-type enemies into the ground. These things. Alright. You can use the magic hammer to kill the turtles in one hit after you knock them on their back. The magic hammer is a good item to use in conjunction with the ether medallion or the ice rod because uh, if you kill a frozen enemy with the magic hammer, they're more likely to drop magic containers for you. So you can get back to full magic pretty quickly like that, if you're lucky. We're just about to the end of this dungeon. Push this block down over here and then take the warp point. And straight ahead is the boss. Just knock them on their backs and then flatten them with the hammer. Alright, here's the boss. You can easy you can either use bombs or you can use the hammer to destroy his little mask. I personally prefer to use the hammer. You can get him more hits that way. Whenever he shoots those fireballs, get ready to stand off to the side of them because they shoot at uh, diagonal angles. Be careful of his tail, because that can do quite a bit of damage. Once you've destroyed the mask, get ready to shoot him with arrows. Alright, get ready to dodge these. Alright, there we go. Just unload on him with arrows. Alright, there we go. Let's go ahead and slam our head on the spike some while we wait for him to blow up. Alright, let's get our heart container and the first crystal. Red, because of you I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. This world used to be the golden land where the Triforce was hidden, but because Ganon, the boss of thieves, wished it, the world was transformed. I'm sure he's intending to conquer even our light world after building his power here. He's trying to open a larger gate between the worlds near the castle using our powers, but the gate is not open completely yet. If we seven maidens come together, we can break the barrier around Ganon's hiding place. I will tell you where the other girls are held. I believe you will destroy Ganon. I will return to my original form at that time. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Alright. The first crystal dungeon is now down now. We're just going to go ahead and head straight to the second one. If you want, you can go ahead and get the flute and get the duck for it and all that before taking on the second dungeon, but we're going to do that afterwards. Because we have to go through that village anyway, so yeah. The next dungeon is uh, south of where your house would normally be in the light world. Your house is now a bomb shop in this world. You can buy 30 bombs for 100 rubies, or later on you can uh, buy a super bomb for 100 rubies. The super bomb doesn't go into your inventory, though. It just kind of follows you around, and to my knowledge, it doesn't actually hurt enemies. It's just used to destroy a wall which we won't really be using that because we don't need anything from the wall that it destroys. Use the hammer to pound down these weird purple stakes. And over here to the left. We'll have to return to the light world in order to actually gain access, kinda, to the next dungeon. Alright, the second dungeon is over here to the left. This little place right here. Alright, return to the light world, then we have to go in and drain the water. There are bombs in that treasure chest if you want them. We're at max bombs right now, so yeah, we don't need them. There we go, got the water being drained and whatnot. Back to the dark world we go. As you can see, it affected this world by uh, having the water there for us so we could swim over here. Take out these guys before crossing the water. Careful the weird water creature that comes out and starts bouncing around the room. The very bottom pot in this room has a key. 
Alright, through the door we go. Careful not to swing your sword with those weird, uh, brown colored things around because they'll shoot fireballs. Instead, I would recommend using the magic hammer while you're around them. Because you can still kill enemies and uh, not have the fireballs be shot at you. I'm going to try to get another heart so I can get back to max health, and that sucked. But hey, I got another heart. I still profited by half a heart. Alright, there we go. Bombing to the next room from here does, doesn't really get you anything worthwhile. At least in my opinion. Alright, from here just keep on heading left. If you want the compass, go to the room below you, but you have to make a big circle in order to get it, which really isn't worth it in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to keep on moving. The treasure of this dungeon is the hook shot, which will probably be my main sub-weapon after I get it. You have to go into this room to get a key right here, and then you have to go back around to use it. We have to put some more water out so we can swim to the next area. That's my only complaint to this dungeon. I feel like there's too much backtracking involved. At least with this particular part of the dungeon, anyway. I guess there really isn't a whole lot of backtracking. Just this part, I don't like having to go all the way back to that room to push this switch and then, you know, retrace our steps. It's not a big deal because it isn't a whole lot of backtracking, though. Let's head back to where we were. Alright, just keep on heading left. Next thing that we're going to be getting is the big key. Alright, the big key is, uh, well, it's on this floor, but we had to climb up to the second floor and fall down in order to get it. Up we go. On this floor, go to the very upper right hole and fall down it. Careful of the fire stick and the fireballs being shot around, and the bouncing water blobs or whatever they are. Alright, we don't need anything from the pots, so let's just ignore those. And here's the big key. Time to head back to kind of the main lobby of this dungeon anyway. The area that has the big chest so that we can get the hook shot. Just swim back across here. I don't know if using the magic mirror would have been quicker to get back to this chest or not. I don't think so. I think it'd be about the same really. Boing! This is the hook shot. It extends and contracts, and boings! It can grapple many things. Boings, huh? I meant boing. How do they figure a chain makes a boing sound anyway? Whatever, though. In the Zelda universe, a rock makes a boing noise, according to Ocarina of Time and many other Zeldas. Alright, over here, push the statue to where that pod is in the upper left. Get rid of the pod first, of course, so you can reveal the switch. Don't be fooled by going into that door. You gotta go over here to the right and go up this door. Go into that door, I mean. And go down and get ready to push a switch. Or lever, or whatever. I always like grappling that pot for some reason. Not too much further and we'll be at the dungeon boss now. Head over here to the right and go into the second waterfall from the right. And up we go. You don't need any magic for the boss, so if you want to, on this floor in the next room, you can use the Aether Medallion to kill the enemies skating along the water. I'm going to wait till more than one gets on screen, though. There we go. Makes for an easy uh, victory over those things. Alright, time for the boss. 
In my personal opinion, this uh, boss is the easiest one here in the Dark World. You use the hookshot to pull off these weird things, and then two slashes from your sword will kill it. You have to do that until all of them are removed from the eye thing. Be careful if you uh, pull these things off of the boss from below because they can sometimes hurt you, so move off to the side if you pull them from below. You pull them from the sides, though, there's nothing to worry about. Okay, just four more of those things. One of those is only going to take one hit now because it got back on it. Alright, just two more and then we'll fight the boss without his little protection. Alright, let him think, let him quit thinking that he's attacking us or whatever. Walk down and to the right whenever he lands, he'll start moving. Unleash your spin attack. So charge, walk down and right, he'll land, unleash. Charge, walk down, right, etc. Very, very easy boss. Whatever the case, though, that boss is down and out, and we got us another crystal. Red, because of you I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. The Triforce will grant the wishes of whoever touches it, as long as that person lives. That is why it was hidden in the Golden Land. Only a select few knew of its location. But at some point that knowledge was lost. The person who rediscovered the Golden Land was Ganondorf, the evil thief. Luckily he couldn't figure out how to return to the Light World. Well, remember that you have magical powers which only the hero can make the most of. There are some other magical warping points, like the one you saw on Death Mountain. By using them, you can go between the two worlds and find the evils hidden in the Dark World. You are the only one who can destroy Ganondorf the Thief. No, Ganon, the evil king of darkness. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Alright, that is it for the second dungeon. Alright, our next destination will be to get the flute. Which is obviously required, otherwise we wouldn't be getting it. Let's head over here to the left. Toss this thing out of the way. The flute lets you call this uh, flying duck that will take you to various locations throughout Hyrule. That's always a fun noise whenever you uh, run into two bushes at the same time. Talk to this guy. After wandering into this world, I turned into this shape. I enjoyed playing the flute in the original world. There was a small grove where many animals gathered. I want to see that place again. I buried my flute there with some flower seeds. Will you try to find it for me? Then I will lend you my shovel. Good luck. You borrowed a shovel. You can dig in many places. You'll never know what you'll find. Alright, let's go up here and use the mirror. Don't use the mirror right next to that boy, otherwise you'll be stuck in place as he plays his tune and uh, you'll be teleported back to the dark world. Oh, here's the flute. Its music surely has some mysterious power. Like calling flying ducks. That's definitely a mysterious power. Alright, we gotta talk to this guy again. Thank you, Red, but it looks like I can't play my flute anymore. Please take it. If by chance you go to the village I lived in, please give it to a tired old man you will find there. Well, my mind is getting hazy. Please let me hear the sound of the flute one last time. Then he, like, turns into a tree. Kinda sad. It's alright, though. We are now headed back to the light world. In the light world, we have to go back to Kakariko Village, and then there's a weather vane there that uh, we have to play the flute at, and then the weather vane blows up and a duck flies out of it. Then from there, you can use the flute anytime you want to automatically, basically quick travel to various locations in Hyrule. So that'll be nice. Plus, we have to have it in order to gain access to the sixth dungeon later on. So we may as well go ahead and get this now. The little weather vane is right over here. Right here.
There we go. However, that duck got trapped into that weather vane, I really don't know, but whatever. We got the duck now and the flute's all ready. And well, that is it for part four.